coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson, but I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games, here today to take a look at Multiplication by Heart by Math for Love. Now I know the title of the channel is Teaching with Board Games and this is not exactly a board game but it's still by Math for Love who has done some fantastic products and as an educator looking for learning resources and ways to make learning more fun, more interesting and just to be more helpful with learning resources, I feel that I would be remiss to not do a review or look into this. Um, it's not so much a review uh, because I'll just be right up front to tell you I think this is an amazing product. Uh, it is a you know an unboxing, a little explanation of what you find inside the box. It's a, a review, I guess. So <laughs> let's get right into it. So Math for Love, if you recall, I've done a couple of um, videos for them already where I've looked at Prime Climb, which is the game uh, which is more for junior students, possibly high school, where you are racing to get your number, your pieces up to the top, uh, not to the top, to the center of the board at the 101 uh, using different facts of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division while rolling two 10-sided dice and using those to move your pieces. Uh, there's a lot of clever stuff in there. I'm not really doing it justice by talking about it right now, but this is not the prime plan video. Math for Love has also done uh, Tiny Polka Dot, which is an absolutely amazing product for younger kids. Uh, so amazing, in fact, that my school had bought copies of it for every kindergarten class in the school that gives you some idea of just how great that product is so then when they said that they were coming up with this one i was definitely intrigued and thought i wanted to be sure to get in on this 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 was actually a kickstarter which uh started um i funded this i don't know how long ago to be honest maybe i'll put that in the you know if you're curious i can find out i can put it in the comments down below, but it, I kickstarted a while ago and it just came in finally um, just the last week. And so I've been sort of looking over it and learning it and understanding it and doing a little bit more research on the whole um, spaced repetition, which is the method of uh, study they use to help people to understand the multiplications here. So I will be talking a little bit about that, but not too much because, you know, I, my understanding of it is just still sort of on a surface level, uh, my understanding. So let's just take a quick look at what's inside the box here. So you lift up the box and this is what you get inside. I've already opened the first deck of cards here. The first deck of cards came in this, this uh, they, were, they were in this little plastic envelope here. So you have all these different cards and with the, what you have then, it's, it's flashcards. And I know anytime I've looked at anything with flashcards before, I've been very negative. This will be the first review I do then, where I'm looking at something with flashcards that's not negative. Uh, so this is you know, the question that you'll be asking or the students see if you can do it by themselves, if they are motivated to do that. But if you're doing it with your student, with your child, then you can look at this, so you're, you're holding it up and it's a three times two and it's a representation. And I like, well, that's one thing I like about it is that you have the representation here of the math facts. So if it's three times two, it's showing three groups of two help them to understand why is three times two six. Right? And on the back, it reinforces some of the ideas with the two, four, and six to show them counting by twos and giving them the answer. Okay, and then two times two. So this first deck is quite simple. It goes all the way, it's one times one up to five times five is the, the, the highest numbers here. So that's all you're getting in this one. Now the idea is, is that every day that you're doing these flashcards, you're only doing them for five minutes. And you know, that's, a, that's an approximation because of course some people might go through them quicker, some people might take a little longer, but you have a set number of cards that you're doing every day. And I'll, I will talk about that in just a second. So you have these ones, but now you have these ones as well. Now these ones I haven't opened up yet, but you can see these are the ones that have the same kind of thing that the Prime Climb had, where they were, um, the special uh, coloration around the, the numbers. Open it up. So the twos are, are just the solid orange, whereas the three is a solid green. And then so eight is three oranges because it's two times two times two, which makes eight. So two times four, and you see the four is two twos. Because two times two is four, and that that whole thing carries through the whole prime climb game. That's where that one was developed. And fives are blue, 
So showing these ones. So just this one is sort of taking it to the next level now where you are um, increasing the difficulty of the questions a little bit. And then let me show you the last one here. Don't you feel special? I'm opening these just for you, viewer. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was certainly more difficult than I'd anticipated. There we go. All right. So with these, it's showing again, the, the, they're, they're representing the numbers in different ways now. So you have one times one, it's just a box. One times two, so you have two boxes. One times three, one times four, so four boxes. All the way up to doing four times five. So you're getting the boxes now. So you're doing your arrays here. And although this is a very thick deck of cards, you're only going to be, it tells you in the instructions that you're taking uh, 25 cards at a time. And those are the only ones that you'll be, so you, you would just separate this into groups of 25 as you're using it, and depending on what cards you have in here. So um, spaced repetition, as I said, is the method that's being used here to help you understand because, you know, if you're studying something, if you don't study it again for a while, like say that you're studying a language and you don't use that language for a long time, you, your memory starts to decay. It starts to fade away and you lose that memory that you had. Um, but so by using things more and more, you memorize it. And that's a typical you know, thing we understand with studying, that when we study and study and study, we retain, we learn, we keep that information. But in the studies that have been done, too much studying can lead to also a problem of retention of information, that you can study less, but actually retain more if you just know when to study. So the, that's the whole idea here is that, it, you know, the, the one analogy I read in my research that I liked was um, if you're building a brick wall, if you're build, put the bottom bricks down then you put your mortar in between the bricks and you start putting bricks on top and more mortar, more bricks, more mortar, more bricks without waiting for that mortar to dry, well, your wall's not going to be very strong because the, the weight of the bricks is gonna smush all that mortar and it's not going to be as strong as you need it to be by giving the proper amount of time in between the layers of bricks to give the time for that mortar to dry properly you are going to have your best wall possible so it's the same idea here you need to give your brain a bit of a break to process and to then go into before you go into your next set in the research that i've done on the spaced repetition one thing that they keep mentioning is that this is almost like hacking your brain this is the science behind your brain science behind your memory and so it's literally the way your brain learns best through the scientific studies that have been done. So, well, like I said, while I can't explain the whole finer nuances of it, I trust the resources and the sites that I've found that have sort of validated and backed this kind of idea up. So it sounds reasonable to me. So maybe look into it yourself and see what you think. So you're starting off with the first deck here, and this is, you see it's labeled, um, can you see there, it's A. So you put your A cards in. So you take your first ones here. And so if you're setting up for a student or a child to do this, you put those into the A section and the other ones can all go into the back. I'll leave them here up for now, but they go into the back. And uh, this is all explained in the instructions here. So this is the instruction book. And it's going to walk you through the process of what is happening. So go through all the questions and let's say that these questions are done incorrectly. So you put those back in the A, and these go into B, go to section B. Now, you have also this handy dandy thing here. This isn't a spinner for, you know, um, like a game spinner or anything. What it does here, you're looking here at the bottom, you see that it says one. So one and up to A. So on day one, you did the A cards. So day two, so I just put this the right way, there you go. So day two, you do the B cards, and then you do the A cards. So day two, I'm going to go to the cards, which are the B cards, the ones I already uh, had successfully done the first day, and any that I successfully get go to the C deck, and any from the 
A deck that I get go to the B deck and any I still don't get stay in the A deck. Now you always want to make sure you're having the right number of cards in your A deck so you, put, you can put more cards in there as, they, as need be because then what's going to happen on the next day, oh, went the wrong way. So you see the next day I'm doing the C deck and then the A deck. So you just follow the path there and it's going to tell you on which day, which ones are you doing. So it, so this is your guide into knowing. So you don't have to memorize, okay, well, which decks do I have to do? It's just simply a case of putting the cards that you need in the proper areas for whether you successfully complete them or not and move them to the next area. And again, all explained clearly in here. And so just about five minutes a day, you're going to be getting your, um, well, not you necessarily. I mean, the students who are doing this, the ch your, your, or your own children who are doing this, are going to be getting the best chances they have for retention of their multiplication facts through this. And like I said, I, I love the way that it is. The the math facts are represented in all these different ways. So, like in groups, in arrays, and in the prime climb format. Now, I said at the beginning that it's not a board game. That is not entirely true because in the back here, they do have some different mini games. So they have things here. So day three, day four and forward. So you know, it just explains what to do in there. But you see here, they have actually a few mini games here. When you have completed the deck, how can you still use this? So it's not just, okay, I'm done and it's over. Um, you can still use this for games just to reinforce those things because again, if you're not using it constantly, this is the kind of thing that memory will decay if not used regularly. So this will just one way to keep the memories going. And you know what? I think this thing too, I mean, the idea of the space memory, I'm looking actually to use this for my own purposes. Um, currently I'm actually studying the language Tagalog, which is the language of the Philippines. So I will be using the system here shown by multiplication by heart to see how it helps me with my Tagalog lessons. So overall, I think this is a great product. I don't know if it's available in stores yet because like I said, mine came as a Kickstarter. So, but do keep a lookout for it. Um, I think it's a really, like I said, really great product. Math for Love is absolutely top notch when it comes to anything to do with math and math learning. And so I'm not disappointed by the product that I have here. They have done it again. You know, uh, so they've only got like a few products out. Like I said, they've got Prime Climb, they have um, Tiny Polka Dot, and now they have Multiplication by Heart. They do a lot of blogs. They do a lot of other puzzles and things out there to help people stimulate mathematics interest. But for actual physical products, these are the only three. But all three are great, and I highly recommend any of them. So if you're new to the channel, then what I'm doing is I'm putting out content on a weekly basis around topics of gamification, game-based learning, and you know, learning resources, which make learning more fun. As a student, I wasn't a very good student, and I always teach the way I wish I was taught. That's my whole mantra in teaching. And if this sounds like something good to you, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe button down below, maybe the little bell to indicate when a new video comes out, which like I said, is on a weekly basis, sometimes maybe even a little bit more. And if you have any ideas for things you might like to see on the channel, if you know of other great products, if you know of great games or publishers or books, then please, again, leave me a message in the comment section below. Really do love to hear from the viewers as it gives me focus to my content to make sure I'm giving you some really relevant material. And that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. Until next time, I am Craig Thompson Wood, your host on Teaching with Board Games, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back?